your sins, or it could not even just be referring to sin, it could be referring to one of the major things in being, one of the major things in life. A big deal. That a person swear gali galoch his parents, insult or offend, use harsh language towards their parents. The Qadis of the Sahaba they asked, how does somebody do that? Not that it's impossible, but for them, they're thinking, why would anybody do that? How can anybody do that? Um, and subhanAllah, we live in a very strange time, and we hear stories of Muslim kids speaking back to their parents. They speak to each other using really bad language all the time just for fun. Allah knows best, and we just make do Allah protect us and protect them and protect everybody and protect the entire ummah. Uh, this is a problem, this is a problem, and this is something that our deen is very, very clear about. One is just about speech in general, but then when we are talking about insulting and cursing other people and offending other people, and then this specific chapter in hadith is talking about one's parents, the Sahaba of they ask, how can someone do this? He curses somebody else, he swears at and cusses somebody else, now that person responds, and that person will say something about your father and about your mother. You said something to somebody else, not to your own parents, but you said it about somebody else's parents. Your mom is like this, your dad is like this, or your family is like this. And again, young people, right? this is a reminder for myself and for everybody. So not only even elders as well, I have not seen it or heard it so much, but everybody can get angry and everybody can get upset. Right? This chapter is about how does someone insult their parents? Right? And how do you not insult your parents? Don't insult anybody else. That is the instruction. Do not ever say anything to anybody else about anybody else's parents. Why? Because they will respond to you. Right? This is similar to the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he instructs. Don't insult those people. Who call on others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't insult them, we make dua for them, we give da'wah to them, we show good akhlaq to them. But the fact that they are not people of iman, wala ladina, same word. Sub means to insult, gali galoch. Okay? To use bad language. Right? Four letter words in English, things like that. Right? We know what we are talking about. Don't be offensive or harsh or rude to the people who call on other people besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk is the worst sin. Okay. We know that, but still, the instruction and the adab and the akhlaq towards them is that we don't speak harshly with them. We invite them. That's what the word da'wah means. Da'wah means invitation. If you invite me to your house just so that you can argue with me and insult me and debate with me and tell me how dumb I am or tell me how wrong I am, then I'm never going to accept an invitation like that. Don't insult those people that call on others with Allah. They will respond back and they will attack your religion. They will respond back to you and they will attack the one that you believe in. They will respond back and they will attack the one that you worship. And so a similar example is being given here. That this is one of the major issues, this is one of the major sins, right? That someone does that to their parents. And how do you do it to your parents? You're doing it indirectly. You're doing it indirectly. You are saying something mean, you are saying something harsh to somebody else, maybe it's about their parents or maybe not, but now because you provoked someone, because you upset someone, you offended someone, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? He is telling us through the tongue of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that person, what can they do? That person, what can happen? Yashtimu rajulu fa yashtimu abahu wa ummahu. Now that person will respond to you. That person will get angry. You're already angry, you started it, or whoever. This back and forth, this causes both people to get into trouble. This causes both people to get into problems. This person will now insult and cuss his own mother and his own father. And may Allah protect us. The next hadith in this chapter from Urwat ibn Ayyad. أنه سمع عبد الله بن عبد بن عاص رضي الله عنهما من الكبائر عند الله تعالى أن يستسب الرجل لوالده 
So similar hadith, but with a different wording. He makes other people curse at their parents. He makes other people curse at his parents. Right? Because of your bad akhlaq, and because of your arguing, because of your bad temper, and because of your bad language towards other people, they use bad language towards you, and they also now talk about your parents. They also now talk about your mother and father. This is something that you caused. Right? And so I make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to one. This is one of the consequences of our actions. This is one of the consequences of our speech and of our tongue. And we're not mindful of what we say, how we say it, People are wrong. People are wrong every day. People are wrong all day long. The way to correct someone's mistake and the way to teach someone that they are wrong or show them what is the right way is not to offend them. Right? It's not to offend them. They literally insulted the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? Umu Jamil, the wife of Abu Lahab. Right? She said about her nephew sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? where is Mudamma? Mudamma. Mudhammam is an Arabic word, it means the opposite of Muhammad. Muhammad means the one who is praiseworthy. And Mudhammam means the one who is blameworthy. Completely opposite meaning, she's literally making fun of his blessed name. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was saying it, she was obviously, Allah has told us that she is going to be punished. Right, Muhammad al-Khattab, she's going to be carrying fireworks, she's going to be wearing a necklace of fire, right? And all of these other punishments Allah has already told us about in the Quran. But she did this. And when the Rasul heard this, he says, I don't know who she's talking about. It's not my name. My name is not Mudamma. My name is Muhammad. She's upset, she's mad about somebody else. Right? And so there has to be hikmah, and we have to learn, right? Inshallah, we teach our children and you know, one last thing that I'll say, just about bad language in general, not specifically talking towards talking back towards parents. That's another issue. But um, we have to be very careful as parents, right? Uh, video games and the internet, these are things that our children spend a lot of time with. Who are they listening to? Who are they talking to? What are they learning? Right? What are they learning? Okay, maybe they're in HIFS, maybe they're in Islamic school, maybe they're in a masjid five times a day, but Still, what is it that they are listening to in between those times? What is it that they are saying in between those times? Who are they learning from? What are they being influenced by? We have to be very, very, very careful and aware. And we make Allah make it easy. It's not easy. I don't say that it's easy, but I'm saying that it's necessary, right? And um, you know, what can we say about young people cursing their parents? Right? This is something that will bring about the punishment and the ghadab of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, while we are still alive. While we are still alive, right, for us to show this level of disrespect to our parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away all of the good things that He can offer in this dunya, and He will take away all of the good things that He can offer in the akhirah, right, if we don't watch how we speak to our parents. Right, up until now, so many chapters we've passed, like good 17, 18 chapters, all about how we are supposed to show good akhlaq to them, we make dua for them, even if they are mushrik, we are patient with them, even if they're telling us to do something wrong, we listen to them, even if what they are saying is unfair. One thing after another, after another, after another, subhanAllah, now we live in a time and a day and age when I started off by saying people raise their voice towards their parents, people raise their eyebrows towards their parents, people raise their hands on their parents. Right? The Prophet وسلم, right, the hadith of Jibreel, right, the question about the signs, right, um, what are the signs? Tell me about the day of judgment. And so Jibreel السلام, he says, what? The one that you're asking doesn't know more than the one who's asking. Right, meaning I also don't know just like you also don't know. Right, it's a hint that this is also Jibreel السلام, right? And so then Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, Akhbirni an amaratiha. He asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, okay, you tell me what are the signs, right? And antali da tamatu rabbata. One of the things that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions is that the child basically gives birth to, but we can translate it, we can understand it, the child runs or bosses around or has the authority over the parents. And subhanAllah, we hear stories like this, parents need to be firm. Kids, if your parents are telling you this is bad for you, 
this is wrong, this has bad language, this has bad scenes, this is negative, this is un-Islamic. They're telling you that because there is harm for you. There is no benefit for you. And this harm is not just difficulty in dunya. We're talking about, they're telling you about difficulty for you in the akhirah. And so, you know, I made dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our youth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our tongues, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our tongues full of khair and dhikr and guidance and good akhlaq and protect our tongues from speaking like this. And we just make dua, Allah give sabr to those parents and Allah give hidayah to those children. Allah mm-hmm. give sabr to those parents who are suffering in this way. Allah repair our broken homes, Allah make it easy for those parents, Allah inshallah, bring our children back to the way of the straight path. And protect us, inshallah. We will lose our iman if we don't watch how we talk to our parents. We will lose our iman. We will not be able to leave this world with iman if we find, if we end up doing things like swearing at our parents. Right? Even if they're 100% wrong, even if they are not Muslim, even if they are doing shirk, that is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are your mother, they are your father, you and me, we have to have the highest level of akhlaq for them. It's not easy, but it's necessary. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do it for His sake. We do it for the reward from him. I mean, Allah, give me and all of us so much to feed, so much to feed, so much to feed. Allah, man, just salam, 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 man